All of the major news stories made simple and easy for your listening pleasure. We'll break it down for you in key words for the segment. We're joined by Adam in the studio. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Nina. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Happy Friday. Happy Friday. You We've seem made to be it. in a great mood. <laughs> yeah, I'm always in a great mood. <laughs> Is it because you found a chocolate in the studio? I did. There's four in a row. That's interesting. And it's very it's tempting me uh, in, to steal it. I, I think it's for someone else. I but. was going to say, I think one of the <laughs> news anchors at Adam Young Radio uses that kind of as our office. Maybe uh, her. Okay. Secret stash that you found. Yeah, it's very well presented, though. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's very inviting. <laughs> All right. Whatever. Do spark a little bit of joy yeah. in our lives, right? Yeah. All right. Let's jump into keyword news. We're going to try to clarify some of these major headlines for you, starting with our COVID-19 coverage, our first pick of the day. Virus curbs still needed. So some European nations have been easing virus curbs despite record number of daily cases. Eyes have been on whether Korea will do the same, but so far local officials say that's off the table. Yeah, that's right. The uh, ranking health official made it clear that Korea cannot adopt such a policy as we've been seeing in Denmark and France and places like that saying... Uh, quote, our situation is different from theirs. Uh, this was the words of a health official by the name of In- Im Sugyong, who said Korea is taking into account foreign countries' quarantine policies. However, it is kind of hard to put it into our situation here mm. in Korea, of course. Mm. Uh, the uh, situation, of course, is uh, will be different according to the country. Sure. Uh, she did note that Omicron spread is fast but less severe. Meaning less deadly? Meaning less deadly and uh, less critical patients. But she added that Korea is not yet at a stage to loosen restrictions considering Omicron's high contagious power. The highest spread could actually lead to the growth of critically ill patients, um, shaking the medical system, Mm. uh, she explained. And Mm. she also noted that in Europe, there are so many infected people to create this so-called herd immunity. Mm. Uh, In Korea, however, there are relatively few infected people to expect that. Mm. Um, The government has started an Omicron response system, uh, making the most of neighbourhood clinics and at-home treatment Mm. uh, at the moment. Uh, But this didn't get off to the best of starts, uh, Mm. with not enough medical staff available to monitor those being treated at home. Mm. And so this kind of brings into the question of, well, if there's not enough people to take care of this, then will there be enough people to take care of all those infected people if we do ease restrictions? Uh, So therefore, authorities have reduced the monitoring and are asking more people to update their conditions themselves. Mm. Uh, There's more than 400 clinics to handle at-home patients at the moment, but they are only capable... Uh, of monitoring just under 11,000 patients, 89% of that threshold has already been reached as we're speaking. All right. So it seems like there there are some glitches that they have to work out going forward. I uh-huh. mean, these are newly implemented measures, right? Yeah. Um, even even the uh, rapid antigen test, there was criticism that maybe it wasn't so clear on its mm-hmm. first day, but yeah. trying to work out the kinks as we go forward. Mm-hmm. On to our second to keyword of the day. Winter Olympics kickoff. The Beijing Winter Olympics, I chuckle because I can't believe the moment is here, right? Yeah. Uh, there was so much tug of war and so much noise surrounding, yeah. well, some of the athletes too, that who knew that yeah. this day would approach us so quickly. Uh, uh, it's having its opening ceremony tonight. Uh, the event is taking place under a cloud of COVID-19 restrictions and also the diplomatic boycotts. Mm, it's under a lot of uh, kind of controversy and yeah. uh, it's a bit different uh, this time around. Uh, Almost 3,000 athletes from 90 countries are taking part in uh, the event. Now, Beijing becomes the first city, actually, to host both the summer and the winter games so uh, but the summer games wasn't as controversial uh, as this time uh, this winter olympics and china's economic standing its global prowess actually yeah. differs a great deal too right i mean yeah. with great influence comes a kind of a higher expected set of responsibilities mm, you're exactly right yeah it yeah. does uh, now uh, while the competition did start on wednesday uh, the opening ceremony will take place at 8 p.m. at local time. Um, usually competitions do yeah. start before the actual opening ceremony. <laughs> Which is really confusing. It by is the confusing. <laughs> it happens at every Olympics, even the summer games. <laughs> Why is it like, called the opening ceremony? I don't know. I think it's scheduling issues or something uh, like that. Sure. Yeah. It's a lot of athletes, a lot of competitions. Yeah, it is, certainly, mm-hmm. in a, a, a relatively short space of time. Yeah. Now, Beijing's National Stadium will host uh, the ceremony. It's also called the Bird's Nest, uh, for those who, fun fact, <laughs> didn't, didn't know. It looks like it. Yeah. And uh, under tight security, of course, it will be happening. So any sense of festivity, unfortunately, will be absent. 
Um, South Korea uh, will be the 73rd country to enter the stadium with a delegation of 20 athletes and 28 staffers, so relatively small. I was going to say, that, that's yeah. a small number of people, right? Yeah, but of course, that's not all the athletes that are yeah. taking part in the Olympics. Uh, the flag bearers are short track speed skaters Kim Alang and uh, Kwak uh, Yoongi. Uh-huh. Um, now, the closing ceremony will take place on February 20th. Uh, so we have a few weeks of uh, Olympic Games. Yep. Now, in total, some 60,000 people are expected uh, to be uh, taking, place, uh, taking part in the Games, either as an athlete or an organiser or uh, limited officials spectators. or coaches or whatnot. But it is certainly limited, yes. Uh, the events will take place, we've mentioned this before, within this uh, closed loop, as it's being called. That will allow them to move between accommodation and venues on official transport. They are not allowed to move freely in public. Uh, 64 Korean athletes in total will compete in Beijing. They'll represent the country in bobsleigh, luge, skeleton, ice skating mm. and skiing. It, it seems like we have humble uh, expectations. Two yeah. gold medals, that's what we're vying yeah. for, right? But there's Which fewer is... athletes, though, relatively. Okay. Yeah, so you want more? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, once the games start, right, yeah. things get heated. But... I mean, speed skating is obviously yeah. where the expectations lie, but of mm. course we've seen a lot of surprises and upsets in mm. other uh, sporting events in the mm. Winter Olympics from Korea as well. So we'll mm. have to see. I think that's the first competition or the first event Team Korea is taking part in, right? Speed skating on Saturday. So yeah. be on the lookout for that. Yeah. All right, on to our third keyword of the day. Sadomai intentions. Japan's recent decision to seek a UNESCO World Heritage List designation for the controversial Sadomai is sparking more protests from Korea. Seoul's Foreign Minister Chung Yong has relayed a protest to Tokyo over a phone call. What mm. was said? Yeah, he expressed deep disappointment uh, in his first ever phone call, actually, with his new mm. Japanese counterpart, Yoshimasa Hayashi. So not the best of issues to start off with. Sure. Yeah. Uh, now, their conversation came just days after the Japanese government actually did push through uh, on Tuesday and decided to go ahead with the listing despite the Korean protests. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the Seoul has been protesting. We've been covering it a lot on this segment as well uh, due to the, uh, the facility, the mines use of forced labor. Um, now, the foreign ministry said uh, Chung pointed out that a proper historical awareness is the foundation of future oriented development of South Korea Japan relations. He added that Tokyo neglected the painful history of forced labor of Koreans. So basically the same comments that usually come out when it comes to these kind of issues between mm-hmm. the two countries. Mm-hmm. Tung also strongly urged Tokyo to fulfill its pledge to honor victims of wartime forced labor at its other UNESCO heritage sites, mm-hmm. namely the notorious Hashima Island, also known as Battleship Island. There was a movie made on that as well. Mm-hmm. It's quite a good movie for those who didn't uh, watch it, and it is uh, a bit painful to watch as well. Mm. Tokyo had promised to showcase uh, a display honoring forced labor victims when the sites were listed in 2015, uh, but the new center actually only highlighted Japan's industrial accomplishments, and there was Mm. no sign of any honoring of uh, Korean forced uh, labor victims. So Chung called on Hayashi for Japan's active stance to seek a solution that the victims could accept uh, in regards to the issue over South Korean victims of not just forced labor, but wartime sexual slavery as well. And he additionally conveyed the Seoul government's stance on Japan's export controls uh, and the releasing of the Fukushima uh, wastewater, Mm -hmm. which is still an issue at the moment. Um, And also within Japan, there's been some uh, local news reports there that have also expressed concerns about the listing, Mm -hmm. noting that Tokyo should should revive or try to revive relations with Seoul. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Um, as for the UNESCO World Heritage listing, if there is growing, uh, I guess, well, we're going to put the brakes mm. on it, right? Mm. Which means that the Heritage Listing Committee might mm. delay its review yeah. and uh, hand it over to Seoul and Tokyo to iron things out before mm. going forward. Could be, yeah. All right, on to our fourth keyword of the day. Less loans. I guess that makes sense when it's more expensive to borrow money. (laughs) Fewer people are taking out bank loans amid rising interest rates and fewer real estate transactions. Run us through the details. That's a bit of an obvious story, isn't it? Well, the obvious still needs to be stated. It's still, it's still, uh, yeah, it's still obvious, (laughs) but it's still, yeah, interesting in the fact that it is getting more uh, expensive. But it's not just the higher interest rates. Um, Five major banks did uh, uh, dish out less loans for the first time in eight months, actually, in January. Mm. Uh, The total amount came to around. uh, 
706.6 trillion won. That's a reduction of more than 1.3 trillion won from uh, December. Now, real estate-related loans actually increased 1.4 trillion won, so it seems like there are still some transactions going on, though it has subsided a little bit. Credit loans actually fell two and a half uh, trillion one. Mm. That's of course because of the more uh, the pricier price tag, uh, as well as higher interest rates and uh, fewer real estate transactions. Tighter lending rules as yeah, well yeah. also contributed to the decline. Mm. Uh, and the downward trend actually started at the end of uh, last year due to the same reasons as well. So we're kind of seeing two consecutive months of this kind of downward trend in loans mm. uh, due to these factors. Due to the pricier price yeah. tags. Mm-hmm. <laughs> price your price tag. Sorry, I don't know why I couldn't have come up with a better term. But yeah. Message received yeah. <laughs> onto our fifth keyword of the day. Netflix law. So the government has announced a list of tech firms required to adhere to the so-called Netflix law. It doesn't mm. single it out, but it mm. gets your attention, doesn't it? What's the latest? Yeah, so it's not just targeting foreign firms. There are two Korean yeah. firms in it, but the three large tech firms from abroad uh, are from the United States uh, mostly, and they'll be required to meet certain performance standards set out by the government. The five companies are... Google, Netflix, Meta, the parent company of Facebook, uh, Naver and Kakao, which are obviously mm. the two Korean companies. Now, under a revision to the Telecommunications Business Act, a.k.a. Netflix law, that went into effect in December 2020, tech firms of a certain size that operate online services must, quote, provide users with convenient and stable to telecommunications mm. services. Now, the list published uh, yesterday is the second such list, and it's actually a reduction from six firms last year. So uh, the content Wave, which operates the Wave streaming service, was included in uh, last year's list, but was taken off this year as its number of daily users was under a million. Uh, Now, the threshold for inclusion on the list are more than one million daily users Uh and more than 1% of Korea's network traffic. And these companies met this uh, standard in the October to December period last year. So that's Mm -hmm. where the criteria lies. Standards to be met are quite vague. There's been a bit of debate over the actual law, but uh, they include maintaining stable services by setting up additional servers Mm -hmm. when needed and promptly dealing with user requests as well. Mm. Um, Foreign-based services must provide quality Korean translations as well for their services. Yeah, so (laughs) so Korean people can use them. (laughs) All right, uh, on to our last keyword of the day. Another Netflix hit. It's kind of funny how those are back to back, huh? <laughs> another Korean Netflix drama is topping the global charts. It is, yes, a yet another zombie horror film, mm. but it takes place in a high school mostly. Yeah. All of Us Are Dead, which is receiving rave reviews around the world, uh, topping uh, all of important Netflix charts. Yeah, it certainly is uh, quite a good year or for a uh, Netflix mm. Korean uh, series anyway. Squid Game was Squid last game. year for the record. Well, in the space <laughs> of a year, if you will. <laughs> I, yeah, know I know we've moved on to the new year, but in the space of and year. it's been compared to the popularity <laughs> of Squid Game, so right. that's fair. So it certainly has gotten more attention, hasn't it, these Korean series? Yep. But uh, Netflix did announce that this, uh, uh, All of Us Are Dead, which was released last Friday, in fact, saw to number one on the platform's non-English language TV top ten list for the week of January 24th to 30th with... Get this, 124.8 million hours viewed. This is the first week. (laughs) It has been the most uh, watched Netflix series worldwide since January 29th, since the day after the day uh, it was released. That's right. Uh, And the day after its release, All of Us Are Dead ranked number one as the most watched content in 25 nations. Mm. It was 46 uh, countries on February 1st and 54 as of Wednesday. So it just keeps keeps increasing. And it started off at number three in the United States, and it is currently the second second most watched content so Mm. who knows it might go to that top rank Um, and following Squid Game and Hellbound All of Us Are Dead is the third Netflix Korea uh, original series to top the platform's charts worldwide it's also the second series on Netflix with uh, zombies (laughs) as the genre Uh, of course the hit period drama Kingdom uh, starring Peduna and uh, a good uh, star-studded uh, cast. Yeah, I mean, but that was, uh, I suppose, a period production. So yeah. this one's a little different. Yeah, it's so kind of like um, a high school uh, setting in the yeah. current day. Yeah. Now, get this, another fun fact. Squid Game had the all-time record of 1.65 billion hours for the first 28 weeks. Yes, a very impressive. But uh, its first week record was 63.2 million hours. Compare that with 120 so with Ooh. all of us in the first week. So that's okay. almost double. So it certainly goes 
goes to show that probably Squid Game set the trend of Korean Netflix dramas gaining popularity across the world. And then Hellbound, and then now mm. Third Time's a Charm, and it seems that all no. of us are dead or well on its way to maybe out to the success of Squid Game. Yeah. Well, this is a very interesting conversation starter. I mean, we still have important uh, award ceremonies set yeah. out um, throughout the world, and namely in Hollywood, and we'll have to mm. see if... Well, do Netflix series have a competitive edge over Ooh. the good old traditional film and TV series markets? We'll see. All right. Thank you very much, Adam, for a week's worth mm-hmm. of coverage. Have a safe weekend. You too. See you next week. See you next week. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.